Elon Musk is not only the richest man in the world, he is also probably the most loved billionaire in the world. But why is that? And is that a problem? Elon Musk has been quite a heavily debated topic recently, mainly due to his attempts and supposed success at buying out Twitter. But like all massive internet personalities, he is a tad bit controversial. A lot of people absolutely adore him and even go as far as to call him the savior that we need in these trying times. However, a lot of other people think he's kind of problematic. So therefore today I will be exploring in depth the problematic case of Elon Musk. But first go check out my Patreon to make me the new most loved billionaire in the world. Now, I think that before we get into what's happening nowadays, let's first look at Elon Musk's life and the good and bad that we can find there. So firstly, there are two major narratives about Elon Musk's upbringing. The first one is the story that Elon Musk tells himself, in which he left South Africa at the age of 17 and came out of college $100,000 in depth. Furthermore, he was living in a very bad apartment, he had to shower at the YMCA, he had to use a computer that he built himself, and he even had to loan out his apartment to be used as a night club to help pay the bills. While living like this, he founded his first company, Sip2, which he sold for millions of dollars. Now this is where the whole self-made billionaire thing comes from, and yes, if this story is true, then Elon Musk really did rise from nothing and became the richest person in the world. However, there's another story that claims that he grew up wealthy due to his father owning parts of an emerald farm back in South Africa. The story also goes that his father was abusive and that Elon got bullied in school quite severely. Now, if this story is true, then we can say that he was helped along the road massively by his parents' wealth and that he profits off of the hard work that other people do. But even if the story is true, and I'm not certain which narrative is correct, I still don't think it's fair to completely discredit him as someone who hasn't worked hard and doesn't have anything to do with his own wealth. I personally don't like him very much, but we have to be rational when we make arguments. Very few people actually succeed without help. That just doesn't really happen. However, it would definitely be hypocritical of him if this story is true, because he goes in all these rants about how all you need in order to succeed is to just work hard, and then boom, you can be like him. He shouldn't act like his massive wealth growing up didn't already start him off miles ahead of most people. But even if this isn't true and he didn't have this wealth growing up, there would still be other factors to take into account. Firstly, these incredible steps in technology that have followed Elon Musk aren't the products of just one man. Thousands of brilliant and talented people have worked with Elon Musk to get where they are today. And I think it's a problem that it just gets seen as a one-man show. The savior Elon Musk who can single-handedly save the world with his genius. I think that's really inconsiderate of all the people who also worked extremely hard to make these companies what they are. You know, the reason Elon Musk is as rich as he is. Now this argument that Elon Musk just profits off of the brilliant people he has working for him is one that I see a lot from his critics. And yes, it has merits. I mean, some people act like Elon Musk is the brain power behind Tesla, SpaceX, and all the rest. But in reality, he just owns the companies. He oversees these projects and he builds hype around them. However, that's not necessarily fair. He does after all, hire brilliant people to invent these things. And while he may not treat them right or pay all of them what they deserve, which is definitely a bad thing, he still hires them, promotes their work, and is very intelligent with his advertising. Now, another common misconception regarding Elon Musk is that he founded Tesla, which isn't true. It was founded by Martin Eberhard and Mark Tarpening in 2003, who then went to Elon Musk with the idea, and in 2004, Elon Musk invested $6 million into the company. He only became CEO of the company in 2008, and he was actually the fourth CEO of the company. He eventually kicked out the original founders through lawsuits, and his title then changed to co-founder of Tesla. Now, we can't forget that Elon Musk has done a lot with Tesla. It wouldn't be what it is today without him. However, it's a lie that he was the founder of the company, and the way he got rid of the actual founders is a bit of a dick move. Furthermore, sadly, like most massive corporations, there are many many instances of sexual harassment stories, lawsuits, claims of rampant racism, and much more. Some of this is even directly attributed to Elon himself. There are in general just a lot of stories of Elon Musk being a terrible manager and boss. His image certainly isn't helped by the sexual harassment story that came out recently, which we will get to, but I first have to mention the controversy surrounding his relationships, namely surrounding his first wife, Christine. So Christine wrote this article that explained her life with Elon Musk, and in it she, among other things, recounted that on their wedding day, Elon told her that he was the alpha of the relationship. She further explains how he was always too busy with work, and when he was home, which was rarely, 
he would be very dominant. Once she told him, I'm your wife, not your employee, to which he responded, if you were my employee, I would fire you. Oh, and he also wouldn't let her grieve their son's death, and he called her emotionally manipulative because of it. Lastly, before they even got married, Elon had Christine sign a prenup that basically took away her rights in the marriage, were they to be divorced. Very sketchy shit, and there are stories like these from all of his relationships. Now this brings us to modern day Elon Musk, and I have to admit that he has done an amazing job at creating his image. You can basically call it a lifelong ad campaign. He's essentially sold himself as the relatable billionaire genius. Elon Musk is on Twitter a lot, and he tweets out memes, he talks about video games and pop culture, he smokes weed on Joe Rogan's podcast. At this point, he's pretty much a gamer bro. However, he has also in recent years been getting more and more political. Specifically, he's been leaning into the culture war. For example, he calls out wokeness, he's very critical of cancel culture, and recently he's been promoting the Republican Party over the Democratic Party. But around a month ago, Elon Musk made a historic bid to buy Twitter, and it was everywhere. He wants to make Twitter more of a free speech platform, which likely means that he wants to change the terms of service, and he wants to make the algorithm transparent. It really seems like minimal work for $44 billion, but I guess he has his reasons. So naturally, he has been under the limelight these days, both from his supporters and from his critics, and recently he made this tweet. In the past, I voted Democrat because they were mostly the kindness party, but they have become the party of division and hate, so I can no longer support them and will vote Republican. Now watch their dirty tricks campaign against me unfold. Now there's a very interesting story behind this tweet, but first let's just discuss why this by itself is very problematic. Like how do you have the nerve to say that the Democratic Party is the party of division and hate during a time when Republicans are banning abortions in an attempt to control women and their bodies, and they're voting against a package for baby formula in a time when it's in shortage, they really just don't care about the babies that they're forcing women to have. They also cry about critical race theory and LGBT hurting their children, instead of putting the blame on what's actually killing their children on a weekly basis in the US. And it's pretty much because a lot of these politicians get paid directly by the NRA, or they get a lot of votes by campaigning for guns. Moral of the story is that while neither party in the US is perfect, the Republican Party is absolutely the party of hate and division right now, more so than the Democrats. And of course a billionaire would want to vote for the party that values rich people over all other people. In reality, the reason Elon Musk doesn't like Democrats anymore is that leftists criticize him on Twitter. He really just doesn't like to be criticized. Oh, and they're also less likely to defend him if he sexually harasses someone which the Republican Party probably would. And speaking of sexual harassment, a couple weeks ago a story came out from the friend of a previous flight attendant of SpaceX. And this friend shared a story of how this girl was essentially manipulated into learning how to be a masseuse. And then one day on the plane while she was giving Elon Musk a massage, he reportedly exposed his erect penis and propositioned that they have sex. He also offered to buy her a horse because she likes horses. She went with her story to SpaceX and they paid her $250,000 to stay silent. Now this story was released by Business Insider, but before they made it public, they reached out to Elon Musk for his statement and he said some really weird things. He was for example quoted saying that he needed more time to think because there was a lot more to the story. And he even said that if I were inclined to engage in sexual harassment, this is unlikely to be the first time in my entire 30 year career that it comes to light. This is an insane thing to say. It's pretty much like saying sexual harassment? Come on! Look at me, based on the career I've had, I would have already sexually harassed someone a long time ago. It's a really dumb thing to say and when Insider reached out again, they didn't receive an answer which was probably the result of Elon's PR team making him stay silent. But this story gets even more interesting, because Business Insider reached out to Elon Musk at 9am Eastern Time on Wednesday the 18th, which just so happens to correspond with the timing of this tweet by Elon Musk that reads, political attacks on me will escalate dramatically in coming months. He tweeted this at 12.22 p.m. on Wednesday the 18th. This was right after Insider reached out with the story, so he probably panic tweeted this to try and shield himself from the incoming story. Because the story itself only came out after this tweet, so on the surface, it would seem that Elon Musk predicted these attacks when in reality, he just tried to cover up his tracks. 
The tweet we read earlier came out only a couple hours after this one, which was probably after he had calmed down, spoken to his team, and found a good cover story. But this last part is what really pisses me off. Now watch their dirty tricks campaign against me unfold. He really just used this whole turning Republican to go against hate as a way to protect his own image. All he really did was choose to support the party that's more likely to support him in a sexual harassment case. Furthermore, he tweeted this. But I have a challenge to this liar who claims their friend saw me exposed. Describe just one thing, anything at all, scars, tattoos, that isn't known by the public. She wouldn't be able to do so because it never happened. Who the fuck says this? Like, do you think that if I'm being sexually harassed, the first thing I'm doing is studying and remembering his scars and tattoos? The sad part is that his fans gobble all this shit up, and it's not only unjust towards the people he fucks over, it's also harmful for all his fanboys whom he manipulates into thinking he's just like them, with their best interests in mind, when he really just uses them to shield himself from criticism. It's really sad that him supporting Republicans in order to save his own image will make hundreds of thousands of people go, you know what, he's correct, the Democratic Party is hateful. Republicans all the way, but is not based on actual politics, just the misconception that, oh, the woke people are trying to cancel us. So despite the good work Elon Musk and his companies have done, he's not nearly the savior that people make him out to be. He's actually a really problematic person. However, I watched this video by Moon and it really intrigued me because it mentions how we live in a sick society and that Elon Musk might just be a symptom of that sick society. And I think that's very interesting. Wealth inequality is the highest it's ever been in the US and I guess people feel better about themselves if they can relate to the richest people. As long as we believe that wealth is only given to those that work hard, then rich people can keep being rich and poor people can keep being poor. And who profits from that? Well, rich people do. Now, I'm not saying that success doesn't come from working hard. It definitely does, but it also comes from so many other factors like luck, wealth, the opportunity to get a good education, being a white man. And please don't take that as if I'm saying it's bad to be white or that you should feel responsible if you're white and a man, because you shouldn't. I certainly don't. What I'm saying is that it definitely is a socio-cultural factor. I mean, why do you think the 10 richest people in the world are almost all white men? If Elon Musk had been born black and female, but with all the same levels of intelligence and work ethic, because yes, he does have those qualities, then he likely wouldn't have made nearly as much money as he has today. Especially considering that he grew up in South Africa when apartheid was still very much a thing. All these factors of luck, social class, and economic opportunities have given Elon Musk a head start in life compared to so many other people. I'm not trying to say that he isn't intelligent and that he doesn't work hard. I mean, I'm also lucky. I come from a well-off family and I am in a privileged social class, but I'm nowhere near as successful as Elon Musk and I never will be. However, what I'm saying is that hard work and intelligence don't necessarily mean that you'll succeed. There are people out there smarter than Elon Musk who work harder, but barely have a fraction of what he has. Has. I think it's a serious problem when people start idolizing a multi-billionaire. I think it has serious consequences for our society. I think it's problematic if people start looking up to this image of this alpha male billionaire genius, who is just like you because he plays video games and he smokes weed, and he's also the voice of free speech and the kickback against cancel culture, because he's just not in any way the same as the rest of us. But is this really Elon's fault? I think Western society promotes this way of thinking is all political. The wealthy and the powerful will tell the population that all you need to do to succeed is work hard, be humble, and not expect anything from the state. However, in reality, they only say this so that they can keep living comfortably due to the hard work of normal, everyday people. Society's ideals for what our individual lives should be is moving away from what will truly help each person reach self-actualization and is rather placed on how we can be controlled by the rich and the powerful. I think it's stupidly tragic that people hail Elon Musk as the savior of the people when he openly supports the political party that doesn't care about the people. I think Elon Musk is problematic. But what do you think? Do you like Elon Musk? Do you dislike him? Or do you really not care? If there's anything you believe I've missed, then please let me know down in the comments. Oh, so this whole video has really just been leading up to me telling you to follow me on Twitter. That's the only reason I made this video. So do it. Other than that, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe and peace out.